from January 1st, 2023, Continuing Professional Development, or CPD, will be mandatory for professional engineers and limited license holders licensed by PEO. This new mandatory CPD requirement must be met every calendar year, and it will be administered by the PEAK program, which is designed to protect the public interest. Beginning in January 2023, Continuing Professional Development, or CPD, will become a mandatory component for professional engineers and limited license holders to maintain their license each year. The new requirements are based on the Voluntary Practice Evaluation and Knowledge, or PEAK, program that was piloted for more than five years. The mandatory PEAK program is delivered through PEO's online portal and supports our public interest mandate by helping to ensure that license holders practice competently and ethically. The PEAK program is laid out in three steps to be completed annually. A practice evaluation to evaluate your practice and determine your target CPD hours. A professional practice module to learn about professional practices and regulatory processes. A CPD report to declare to PEO the CPD activities you completed. An individual who self-declares as practicing professional engineering must complete all three elements of the PEAK program. Whereas an individual who either self-declares as not practicing professional engineering or is not practicing for other reasons must complete two elements of the PEAK program. In some instances, a license holder who is not currently practicing and not subject to any practice restrictions could complete the program as a practicing license holder by completing all three elements of the program. Annual compliance audits and sanctions to license holders for overdue elements of the program will be introduced in 2024. For more information, visit peopeak.ca. This presentation will provide you with details about this new CPD requirement for Ontario engineers. It will present PEO's path to this new requirement, and it will introduce the mandatory PEAK program, how it works, and the incremental rollout of the program. At the direction of PEO Council, in 2017, PEO introduced a voluntary CPD program called the Practice Evaluation and Knowledge Program, or PEAK program. The PEAK program is a regulatory tool to encourage PEO license holders to engage in CPD activities every year. The program is designed to motivate license holders to maintain their ability to practice professional engineering competently and ethically. The Voluntary PEAK program has been piloted for over five years and will be discontinued in December of 2022 to make way for the mandatory PEAK program, which begins on January 1, 2023. CPD goes by other names, like Continuing Competence or Continuing Education, or perhaps by professional development and professional or lifelong learning. Regardless of the name, they share the same goal, which is to help professionals maintain their practice competence. In 2017, the Professional Engineers Act was amended to include a subsection that authorized PEO Council to establish regulations about continuing education and professional development for PEO license holders. In 2022, a regulation section about annual CPD was created. This new provincial requirement takes effect on January 1, 2023. It describes an annual CPD requirement and how PEO will administer and enforce it. And in November 2022, 
PEO Council committed to implementing this new CPD requirement for license holders. This means that in addition to paying the annual license fee to continue to hold a PEO license, license holders must also comply with this new CPD requirement every year starting from 2023. This move means that from 2023, PEO will join all its fellow Canadian engineering regulators in having a mandatory CPD requirement for their license holders. PEO has considered a CPD program for its license holders multiple times over the years, beginning in the 1960s. Since then, PEO has developed three CPD programs, a mandatory professional excellence program in the 1990s, a voluntary annual reporting program in the 2000s, and the professional development system in the early 2010s. But for various reasons, the mandatory programs were never launched and the voluntary program was short-lived. Two tragedies in 2012 brought CPD back into focus. The fatal roof collapse of the Algo Center Mall in Elliott Lake and the collapse of a temporary concert stage in Toronto that killed Radiohead drum technician Scott Johnson. The inquiries into both these tragedies called on PEO to introduce mandatory CPD for Ontario engineers. PEO Council established two task forces to develop a CPD program. The first task force explored programs for continuing professional development, competence, and quality assurance. And the second task force developed the rules for the new CPD program. Together, their work created the framework for and implemented a voluntary CPD program which became known as the Voluntary Peak Program. The Peak Program protects the public by embracing six guiding principles aimed at reducing engineering practice-related risks. The six tenets stipulate the program must improve the regulation of professional engineering, be relevant to professional practice, be pragmatic, recognize diversity in practitioner needs and resources, be scalable and proportional to risk, and be an effective program. As Ontario's engineering regulator, PEO's mandate is to serve and protect the public interest. This mandate includes a duty to ensure that all license holders meet standards of learning, professional competence, and professional conduct. It is for this reason that PEO Council created a mandatory CPD requirement for license holders. It complements PEO's other public protection activities like licensing, complaints and discipline, and practice standards and guidelines and it also meets the expectations of key stakeholders who have called for mandatory CPD for PEO license holders. Firstly, it addresses public calls from the Elliott Lake Commission of Inquiry, the Scott Johnson Coroner's Inquest, the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers, and the Ontario Leg of the Association of Consulting Engineering Companies. Secondly, it complies with a recommendation from PEO's 2019 External Regulatory Performance Review to bring PEO's CPD program in line with regulatory best practices. And thirdly, mandatory CPD meets expectations from the Attorney General of Ontario, the Minister responsible for PEO and the Professional Engineers Act. The PEAK program will also provide value to license holders. 
mandatory CPD assures you are maintaining competency. It demonstrates to the public and employers that you are qualified and up to date. It shows your commitment to continually improving your engineering practice. It helps you plan your professional goals. It enhances your ability to work across Canada where other regulators already expect you to engage in CPD every year. And it will provide you with networking opportunities while participating in CPD activities. The original Voluntary Peak Program forms the basis for the mandatory program, but there are changes to make it more effective and easier for license holders. Here is what stays the same. PEO continues to deliver a CPD reporting program for license holders. The program name will remain the Practice Evaluation and Knowledge Program or PEAK program. The program framework remains the same, including the strategy, goals, design intent, risk-informed basis, personalization, and flexibility. The program will still have three core elements. The program will continue to apply to professional engineers and limited license holders, and the program will continue to be delivered through the online PEO portal, allowing license holders to complete it anywhere and anytime. This also allows PEO to instantly track their completions and update PEO's register of practitioners. Here is what is new. Enforcement will start from 2024. That's the second year of the program. Non-practicing individuals must declare as practicing within 30 days of resuming practicing, pursuant to Section 51.2 of Regulation 941. The program will run from January 1st to December 31st for everyone. That's the calendar year for everyone. For now, individual license fee cycles will remain unchanged. A new platform for the PEAK system will deliver an accessible and seamless user experience that is compatible with mobile devices like tablets and smartphones. PEAK will reflect PEO's new options for practice status and license status, and new names for two program elements to better describe their scopes and purposes. Phase one of Mandatory Peak will begin January 1st, 2023. This is when the mandatory version is launched with a new peak cycle, updated program names, enhanced program rules, a new online platform, and it will reflect PEO's new options for license and practice statuses. Phase two of Mandatory Peak will begin January 1st, 2024, when PEO will start enforcing the program. And in the spirit of continuous improvement, future phases can be expected as PEO refines the program based on feedback and updated best practices. Section 51.2 of Regulation 941 outlines the enforcement measures available to PEO. There are two enforcement measures. PEO could monitor and audit an individual's compliance to make sure they completed the program correctly. And PEO could administratively suspend the license of an individual who fails to comply with the program. Penalties like fines and cancellation of licenses will not be used. Please stay tuned for more details next year, in 2023, about procedures and requirements for auditing and suspensions, because PEO is currently developing them. The PEAK program must be completed every calendar year by professional engineers and limited license holders, including individuals who are not practicing. However, 
those not practicing will have reduced requirements compared to practicing license holders. PEAK does not apply to new or reinstated professional engineers and limited license holders in their first calendar year of licensure. Someone who is newly licensed or reinstated will not have PEAK requirements for the rest of that calendar year, but they will have annual PEAK requirements starting from the next January 1st and every January 1st that follows. Provisional and temporary license holders, engineering interns, and PEO applicants are exempt from the program. The program will continue to be delivered through the online PEO portal, and it will have three core elements. Everyone must complete the first two elements for every January 31st. Only practicing individuals will have to complete the third element for every December 31st. PEO's new options for license status are permitted to practice and not permitted to practice. The status of not permitted to practice will be accompanied by at least one of nine reasons to provide context. Seven of the listed reasons address existing situations, whereas two reasons are new. More details about an individual's license status can be found on PEO's website. PEO's new options for practice status are practicing and not practicing and license holders can change their practice status any time. But PEO could apply a practice restriction that will prevent some individuals from changing their practice status. Practicing describes when they engage or intend to engage that year in acts of professional engineering in Ontario or for clients or recipients in Ontario, even if they engage on a part-time basis. Conversely, not practicing describes when they are not engaging and do not intend to engage in acts of professional engineering for the rest of the year. These descriptions are drawn from the Professional Engineers Act, which defines the practice of professional engineering, and PEO's website has explanations and examples to help license holders correctly declare their practice statuses. Please take note that an individual's practice status is not influenced by their job title, employer or work sector, whether they work full-time or part-time or permanent contract or casual, whether or not they stamp engineering documents using the license seal, or by whether or not the industrial exception may potentially apply to their situation. More details about an individual's practice status can be found on PEO's website. There are two routes through the program, a practicing route and a not practicing route, and the not practicing route offers reduced program requirements. And PEO's new statuses are significant because an individual's peak requirements are determined by their practice and license statuses. A practicing individual will automatically be assigned a license status of permitted to practice, and they must complete all three elements of the program that year. Whereas a not practicing individual will automatically be assigned a license status of not permitted to practice and therefore will only be required to complete two elements of the program. In some cases, an individual who is not practicing and not subject to practice restrictions could choose a license status of permitted to practice. Doing so will require them to complete all three elements of the program, just like a practicing license holder. This alternate route means that while there are two main routes through the program, some 
not practicing license holders will have a choice over how they wish to comply. Expanding on that overview, a practicing individual must complete all three elements of the program every year. The practice evaluation, the professional practice module, and the CPD report. And a not practicing individual is required to complete two elements of the program every year, the practice evaluation and the professional practice module. But in some cases, an individual who is not currently practicing and not subject to any practice restrictions has the choice to complete the program like a practicing license holder by completing all three elements that year. The first program element is a practice evaluation, which is due every January 31st. This self-assessment applies to everyone and has two parts. The first part is a practice declaration where the individual declares their practice status for the rest of the year, and they can update it any time. The second part involves either a practice evaluation questionnaire about practice activities or a non-practicing survey about non-practicing circumstances. The questionnaire has 20 multiple choice questions and takes about 15 minutes to complete. It will instantly assign a CPD target to the individual, which they must complete and declare to PEO by the end of the year. The CPD target will be personalized and based on a risk-informed calculation that is applied to the answer selections and the target number could be anywhere from 0 to 30 hours for the year. Meanwhile, the non-practicing survey has three multiple choice questions and will take a few minutes to complete and no CPD target will be assigned to these individuals. The second element is a professional practice module, which was previously called ethics module and is due every January 31st. This element involves a learning module on regulatory topics, including professional practice, ethics, public welfare, and the environment. PEO will create a new module every year, which is expected to take less than one hour to complete. The third element is a CPD report, which was previously called Continuing Knowledge Declaration and is due every December 31st. This element will only apply to individuals who received a CPD target from the practice evaluation element. In other words, it applies to practicing license holders and some not practicing license holders who chose to complete this element. They must use the online PEO CPDR form to declare to PEO the CPD activities they completed that year in response to the assigned CPD target. The program is uniquely designed to assign a personalized annual CPD target with a potential maximum of 30 hours for the year, and individuals could be assigned a target of zero or 30 hours too. During the pilot phase, when voluntary peak was in operation, we saw that the average CPD target was 14 hours. The program demonstrates three important considerations. The program focuses on relevant CPD activities. The program excludes professional practice hours from CPD reporting because of inherent redundancy associated with asking practicing license holders to declare their practicing hours as CPD activities. And 
the program maintains a lean list of CPD admissibility criteria, which is flexible and simple to calculate. When it comes to reporting their CPD hours, license holders can declare more CPD hours than their CPD target, and the program allows for one hour spent on an activity to be reported as one hour. A CPD activity will be admissible for the program if the content covered by the activity helps the license holder reduce their professional practice risks. This means that CPD activities will count if the learning activity addresses knowledge of the responsibilities of professional engineers, understanding of pertinent codes and standards, and knowledge of best practices in acts of professional engineering, all of which must be relevant to the individual's practice areas. Specifically, the CPD activity must have engineering learning content that will help them maintain their ability to practice professional engineering, is directly relevant to their engineering practice areas, includes technical or regulatory knowledge about their acts of professional engineering, and must not include their practice hours or their acts of professional engineering. So, yes, CPD activities on engineering-related management will count for PEAK if the learning activity addresses how to manage resources for acts of professional engineering. And yes, CPD activities on engineering related communications will count if the learning activity addresses how to effectively communicate acts of professional engineering, like the best ways to present and document engineering instructions made verbally or in writing, such as emails, memos, requests for information and responses to RFIs, reports, letters, and drawings, plus CPD activities on health and safety will count if they address how to safely plan and engage in acts of professional engineering, like learning how to conduct acts of professional engineering in a high-risk environment or developing protocols or guidelines for conducting such acts. The program will accept all learning formats because it emphasizes and focuses on what is learnt and less on how it is learnt, since individuals learn in different ways and have different and unique personal circumstances. This means that even though an individual must choose admissible CPD activities, they may participate in activities in their preferred learning format. These include admissible activities that are free or paid, self-paced or instructor-led, sessions that are delivered virtually or in person or in a hybrid manner, as well as events that are held locally or overseas. Examples of admissible CPD activities include studying and reading, attending seminars and webinars, passing technical courses, delivering engineering lectures, presentations, or publications, developing engineering guidelines and standards, and participating in technical mentoring. The takeaway is that the CPD admissibility criteria are focused but flexible. They are focused on one area of learning, which simplifies the CPD obligation. And they are flexible, which allows any learning format to count. Ultimately, the program recognizes that practicing license holders already engage in CPD activities and is designed to encourage them to declare those activities to PEO. And for those individuals who have not engaged in CPD, 
The program will motivate them to engage in annual CPD activities moving forward. Your first information resource is the PEAK webpage, peopeak.ca, where PEO posts all the latest program details, including explanations, illustrations, videos, and documents. PEO regularly updates the details as soon as they become available. If you have additional questions, you can submit an email to the PEAK team at peopeak at peo.on.ca. The phone number for the PEAK team is 416-224-1100, extension 1117, or 416-840-1117. Of course, you can access the webpage anytime, 24-7, but emails and phone calls will be addressed during regular business hours. PEO's outreach and communications efforts include email correspondence. You can update your email address anytime in your PEO portal account. Efforts also include presentations, videos, social media posts, and magazine articles. Plus, look out this month for mail correspondence, and PEO will soon publish a frequently asked questions document, user guide, and tutorial instructions. PEO will remind license holders of their peak requirements with automated email notifications to ensure that license holders receive their peak reminders instantly and without delay. However, critical notices will be mailed to them, even though PEO has a policy to communicate by emails only. This exception is being made to help license holders stay on track with their peak obligations and avoid any penalties. PEO has many public facing teams that will continue to provide targeted user support and customer service. Their contact details can be found on the Contact Us page on PEO's website. For instance, the Financial Services Group will continue to address inquiries about fees, billings, fee remission, and resignations. And the Document Center Group will continue to update records and assist with portal logins alongside the technical team. Here are 10 commonly asked questions about the mandatory PEAK program. Question one, why is the PEAK program mandatory? Ontario legislation outlines a new CPD requirement for engineers licensed in Ontario. This stipulated in the Professional Engineers Act and Section 51.2 of Regulation 941. This new CPD requirement will take effect on January 1st, 2023. This requirement applies to professional engineers and limited license holders including individuals who are not practicing and those with a suspended license. Question two, what are the requirements of the PEAK program? The PEAK program must be completed online through the PEO portal, which means it can be completed anytime, even after regular business hours. And, there are three elements to the new mandatory CPD requirement. A practice evaluation, which is due every January 31st. A professional practice module, which is due every January 31st. And a CPD report, which is due every December 31st for individuals who have a CPD reporting obligation. Question three, 
What is practicing? You are practicing if you engage or intend to engage in acts of professional engineering in Ontario or for clients or recipients in Ontario. These acts are described by the Professional Engineers Act and they include part-time practice activities. Otherwise, you are not practicing. Your practice status is not determined by job title, type of employment, like full-time or part-time, permanent or contract, type of employer, like government, regulatory entity, engineering firm, sole practitioner, or consultancy, whether or not you stamp engineering documents using the license seal, or by whether or not the industrial exception may potentially apply to your situation. Question four, do I have to complete peak if I don't practice? Engineers who are licensed by PEO must complete the peak program. This includes individuals who are not practicing because they are still license holders. However, they will have reduced requirements compared to practicing license holders. These non-practicing individuals include retirees who are not practicing at all, not even part-time, people on fee remission, individuals on parental, medical, or full-time study leave, and working individuals who are not practicing. Please remember that the new mandatory peak program will launch on January 1st, 2023, but it will only be enforced from 2024 and PEO is exploring exemptions for individuals with mitigating circumstances. Question five, am I stuck with the same status until the next year? No, you can update your practice status anytime by repeating the practice evaluation element. In fact, according to section 51.2 sub three, of Regulation 941, non-practicing individuals must declare as practicing within 30 days of resuming practicing. And your CPD target will be waived for the rest of the year if you need to change your status later in the year. Examples of situations include if you start or stop practicing later in the year, and if you start or stop declaring as not practicing later in the year for reasons like starting or ending parental leave, medical leave, full-time study leave, or unemployment. Question six, are there penalties for not completing peak? In 2023, there are no penalties because it is an educational phase intended to allow license holders to learn about the new program rules and requirements. But enforcement will start from 2024, including the administrative suspension of licenses for individuals not completing peak elements on time. The duration of these suspensions will depend on how long the holder of the suspended license takes to complete their overdue peak elements. Question seven, will there be peak audits? Yes, from 2024, PEO will perform annual audits of peak program records submitted by license holders. The goal will be to verify the program is being completed correctly. PEO is developing the auditing procedures and will publish details next year like audit selection criteria, proofs, timelines, and consequences. Question eight, can I apply for an exemption from PEAK? Initially, only license holders who are in their first calendar year of being newly licensed or reinstated will automatically be exempt from PEAK. 
they will start peak from the next calendar year. Additionally, PEO is exploring opportunities to accommodate individuals for extenuating circumstances and will have more to say on this next year. Having said that, PEAK is set to be enforced from 2024, but not in 2023. Question 9. Does this webinar count towards the CPD reporting requirement? Yes. Reviewing this webinar could count once per license holder as a CPD activity of one hour in duration. Using this CPD activity will be at your discretion since you will likely have many other CPD activities that would be more suitable for your CPD reporting needs. And remember that your CPD report must be about a CPD activity that you completed during the same calendar year. Question 10. Where do I get more details about PEAK? Your first resource is the PEAK webpage, peopeak.ca, which has all the latest program details, such as explanations, illustrations, videos, and documents. PEO regularly updates these details as soon as they become available. If you still have more questions and need answers, you can submit an email to the PEAK team at peopeak at peo.on.ca. The phone number for the team is 416-224-1100 extension 1117 or 416-840-1117. Remember that you can access the webpage anytime 24-7, whereas emails and phone calls will only be addressed during regular business hours. PEO highly recommends you submit questions by email, especially during times of high call volumes. In summary, a new CPD requirement will be mandatory from January 1st, 2023, and PEO is introducing a mandatory version of the PEAK program to administer this new requirement. This program will be deployed in phases so that license holders will have adequate time in the first year to learn what they need to do. And from the second year, PEO will start auditing compliance and administratively suspend licenses for individuals not completing the program on time. Together, this program aligns with PEO's other public interest mandate activities and demonstrates a commitment to meeting the regulatory expectations of key stakeholders, notably the Ontario government, the Attorney General as the responsible minister, and the public. Thank you for attending today's webinar. We hope you found this presentation useful. A recording of the presentation will be made available for future reference. That should happen later this month. And please remember that the PEAK webpage is your primary resource for details about the PEAK program. Have a good day, stay safe, and goodbye for now. What does it mean to have earned the PEng title and be able to call yourself a professional engineer? It means your decisions impact the world. Look around you. Regardless of your branch or subcategory of engineering, what you do has an impact. Imagine what infrastructure, housing, transportation, manufacturing, emergent technologies and more would be without professional engineers. It means you've achieved the education, training, and experience necessary to become licensed as a professional engineer. You've done the hard work learning the science and art of engineering. 
You already know engineering requires knowledge and the ability to apply that knowledge competently. It means you are part of a self-regulating profession. PEO has operated under the authority of the Professional Engineers Act since 1922 to serve and protect the public interest by setting and upholding high academic, experience and professional practice standards for the engineering profession. It means as a professional engineer, you follow the laws and regulations that govern our profession. As the regulator of engineering in Ontario, it's PEO's role to assure the public that licensed practitioners are competent to practice in their chosen discipline and that they are taking responsibility for the outcomes of their work. Professional engineers are held accountable to the public through the PEO complaints and disciplinary processes. It means you follow a code of ethics. The PEO Code of Ethics is about giving every engineer a universal guide for making the correct choices in conducting themselves as a professional engineer. This includes things like treating employers, clients and colleagues with respect, acting with integrity, keeping up to date on developments in your area of engineering and demonstrating competence when delivering engineering services. It means that as a professional engineer, you recognize your primary duty is to the public welfare. Through the PEO Code of Ethics, professional engineers have a clearly defined duty to society, which is to regard the duty to public welfare as paramount above their duties to clients or employers. Finally, it means that you take pride in being a professional engineer. You recognize how important it is that the public has trust in our profession. We all play a part in earning and maintaining that trust. And that drives your commitment to following the rules and regulations and using the PEO Code of Ethics as a guide on how you conduct yourself as a professional engineer.